G'day, Cobber. Welcome to this length and midpoint of a line segment lesson. Now, this is a nice and short one, fingers crossed, because you already know all the work from year nine. Unless you're in year nine, and then you might not know the work. And if you're in year seven, why are you watching this video? Much respect, dude or dudette. So the key questions from today's lessons are going to be, how do I find the length of a line segment? And you might be looking at that going, well, what is a line segment? And how do I find the midpoint between two points? Well, let me start with a question. What's halfway between one and three? Yep, two. What's halfway between two and ten? Ooh, slightly more complicated, but six. What's halfway between 101 and 1037? Ha! Yep, well, if you know there's a shortcut, job done. You're actually already miles ahead on finding the midpoint between two points. As a hint, it's got something to do with adding these two numbers together and adding these two numbers together and, in fact, adding these two numbers together. But more on that later, because I digress. So back to basics. We already found out in a previous lesson that when we have two points, either being there and there or there and there, for example, you can draw a straight line between them. This one here would have a positive gradient and this one here would have a negative gradient. But in every single case, where there's a slanted line, I can draw a right angle. And the great thing about right angles is there are two topics that in year nine we deal with that actually have something to do with right angle triangles. And that is Pythagoras theorem and trigonometry. Trigonometry. Trig. Yes. And also just throwing one in there areas all right and uh, people always forget that we can take areas of triangles which is half base times height but the point of it is this right angle triangle means that if i was to know the length of this line here if i was to know the length of that line there i would be able to find the length of this line here which funnily enough is called a line segment shock horror line segment. So we're actually just using Pythagoras' theorem. As a quick recap, here is a right angle triangle. Pythagoras, who apparently may well have been, it is alleged, a murderer because of a secret sect. Look it up online, type in Pythagoras, was he a murderer? And you read a fascinating story about a dude he threw off a boat trying to keep a secret didn't apparently work. Either that or it's completely fictional and we've all been suckered in. But anyway, the general idea is that Pythagoras came up with a rule that said, for certain triangles, if you call this length A, that length B, and that length C, then the area of a square of side A, and that's A times A, added to the area of a, uh, of a square of side B, and I know my diagrams look like C, would actually equal the area of a square of side C. Now, if we know that this square has a length A there and a length A there, then we know the area is A squared. And if we know the area or length of that and the length of that is B, then the area of that is B squared. And likewise, if we know that those two lengths there are C, then the area will be C squared. And up comes that fabulous equation that says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Yep, now that deals with areas. So the area of the two not longest sides is equal to the sum of the area of the longest side. Now, as a point, this one here, c, is called the hypotenuse and is always the longest side. And lots of people say, well, how do you remember? Because they don't always draw triangles in the nicest way. So if we have it that way, I like to say, well, this one here is the hypotenuse because that right angle is actually an arrow pointing to the hypotenuse, which we write in shorthand as hype. Now, if you're from the UK, then the chances are you've got A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Mathematics is a confusing language, is it not? Which one is the hypotenuse? Well, it is always the one on its own. So my advice is always make sure that you remember the hypotenuse is the one on its own. And for the length of a line segment, going back to this original question here with this square, that effectively is what we're trying to find out. How? 
Well, we know the change in height is called the rise, and we know the change in width or, you know, that horizontal distance is called the run. And so if we know the rise and we know the run, then we can use that information to find the distance between the line segment. So that's the theory done. Let's have a practical example. We've got two points, 0, 0,5 and 6,13, and it wants to find the distance between them. Right. Well, let me think about this. If I now know that we've got something along here with the triangle, and we'll say that this is 0, 0,5 and this is 6,13, do I now know the height difference? Well, yes, I do. Like we do for the gradient, if you remember, gradient is equal to rise over run, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, while we're not trying to find the gradient here, it's interesting that that result comes back later on to sort of help us. So, what is my rise going to be? My rise is going to be 13 minus 5. That's a terrible 5 there. So, 13 minus 5 gives me a rise of 8. And what about my run? Well, my run is going to be the difference between my x coordinates. So, it's going to be 6 minus 0, which gives me 6 when I went to school. So what do I now know? Well, I now know that I've got a right angle triangle where that distance there is 8, that distance there is 6. And so I can now say that, let's call that x, that x squared is equal to 8 squared plus 6 squared. 8 squared is 64, 6 squared is 36, and don't forget to write x squared all the way down here, is equal to 100. And that gives x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 100. Now, if you have no idea why I've written plus or minus, let's just go back. We've just said there that x squared is equal to 100, which means when we take that in its longest form or expanded form, we're saying that two numbers, when multiplied by itself, will give me 100. Well, what is 10 times 10? Yep, it's 100. But what is minus 10 times minus 10? Oh, yes. It's also 100. So in fact, there are two solutions to that. It's either 10 or minus 10, which mathematically we can write as plus or minus 10. Now, bearing in mind, we're trying to find the distance between two points. Oh, silly, look what I've done. That should have been plus or minus. Oh yeah, plus or minus square root of 100. So x is equal to plus or minus 10. There we go. That's actually the sensible thing to write. Now, when we're looking for distance, let's just think about that. Is there any such thing as a distance of minus 10 anything? What a distance of minus 10 meters be? I can't even visualize what a negative distance would be. So actually, in this situation, we can ignore the negative value and say that in x, in this situation, is going to be 10. So the distance between 0, 05 and 613 is given by 10. Whoa! Or thumb! Now, then we get to this midpoint business. And I said to you earlier, there was a trick to doing this. Firstly, let's look at the diagram. Here is my diagram. Here is a right angle triangle. Here is 0, 0,5 and here is 6, 11. Now, if we call this point A, for example, and we call this point B, then there is A and there is B. The midpoint actually is going to be smack bang in the middle. That's why it's called the midpoint. And the great thing is, if I draw a line going across here and a line going across here, it actually turns out that the midpoint along that line is actually the middle value of the height. So it's actually halfway here, and it's the middle value across the whole way there. Whoa, mind blown. So that means if I'm starting from 5 and going to 11 on my y value, then I just need to find the value that's halfway between 5 and 11. And for my x value, I'm going between, what is it, 0 to 6. And if I can find halfway between there, then I've got my midpoint. So back to the beginning. How, oh, how do we find the midpoint really easily? Well, actually, I can tell you that the midpoint between 0 and 6 is 3. You're going to say, yep, and the midpoint between 11 and 5 is actually 8. How did I do that? Well, yes, you can use your fingers. Yes, you can just see them, but there's a shortcut.
To find the midpoint between any two numbers, you take those two numbers, you add them together, and you halve them. Same with the y values. Add the two values together and halve them. That will always give you the middle value, otherwise known as the average. So if I have 0, 0,5 and 6, 11, what do we do? 0 plus 6 divided by 2. Oop, let's not get rid of that bracket. We get rid of that bracket. And my y value is 5 plus 11 divided by 2. So that would be 3, 4. Job done. So the midpoint between two points, add these two together, halve it, add these two together, halve it. Now, as with most things, there are always formulas. And this is the formula to find the distance between two points. It looks gross, doesn't it? With all those x2 minus x1s. Actually, this is nothing more than Pythagoras theorem written in a completely different way. And as you've already seen here, here is the midpoint. Now, me, I much prefer if I've got two coordinates, 7, 12, for example, just to circle, add them, divide by 2. Circle, add them, divide by 2. All right, so over to you what you want to do. Now, remember, with maths, what we can do forwards, we can always do backwards. And again, I have borrowed this question from the Cambridge Essential series just to highlight the case and no infringement of copyright was actually um, planned. So find the values of A when the distance between 1 comma A and 3 comma 5 is root 8. Whoa, mind blown. What's this A business? Well, in this situation, they're actually giving you the answer and trying to work backwards to get to the question. Now the first thing here is the distance. So I'm gonna draw a little diagram and go, well that's one comma a, and this is three comma five. And it's telling me the distance between these points is root eight, so I actually know that distance, that line there is root eight. Well if it's distance, we know it has something to do with Pythagoras theorem. So if we call this A, we call that B, and we call that C, then what do we know? Well can I find the height of A? Yes, it's 5, oops, minus this A thing. Well I'm going to write that there, 5 minus A, and I'm going to put it in brackets. What about this horizontal distance? 3 take away 1. Well, 3 take away 1 is equal to 2. So now we've actually just got a bit of algebra. And we shouldn't be scared of algebra. Those of you who want to do VCE will find algebra coming out of your toenails, which would be a bizarre thing to have happen. So what do we now know? We know that this value squared plus this value squared is equal to that value squared. So 5 minus A, all squared, plus B, which was 2 squared, must be equal to the square root of 8, all squared. Now the first thing I know is that the square root and the square cancel each other out. So the good news is if I do the square root of 8 and then square it, I'm going to end back to 8. 2 squared is 4 plus 5 minus a squared. I'm going to take away 4 from both sides, which gives me 5 minus a squared is equal to 8 minus 4. So 5 minus a squared gives me 4. Now how do I get rid of a squared? Well, I can square root both sides. So that gives me 5 minus a is equal to the square root of 4. Now, if you remember, when we square root something, we should write a plus and a minus value in front because there are two possible values. Remember, 2 times 2 is 4, as is minus 2 times minus 2 equal 4. So what do I now get? Well, I'm now going to actually swap my negative a with this term here. And I'm going to get 5 minus or plus root 4. Don't worry about the fact that that's switched upside down just because I've moved it side. Basically switches the signs, but it makes no real difference. Is equal to A. So that tells me we know what the square root of 4 is. 5 plus or minus 2 is equal to A, which means that A can actually take two values. A can either be 5 plus 2 or A is equal to 5 minus 2. So that's 7 or 3. And actually, that means that both of those values of A will give me a triangle with the square root of 8. This one here, the midpoint, is awesome. What do we know about A plus 2? 
Well, if I do a plus 2 and divide it by 2, it gives me minus 1. Why? Because add the two a's together and divide it by 2 will give you the midpoint x. And if I take minus 1 and add it to b and divide that by 2, I get 2. There are two separate calculations. You can work out the value of a and b from there as well. So the big thing about this here is that remember for maths what you can do forwards, you can also do backwards. The whole point of learning about Pythagoras theorem and the distance between things and the midpoint between two points is that you can then use them to actually answer some pretty challenging questions. Don't ever worry about numbers and letters being in questions. It's just going to test your algebra. Okay, thanks very much for listening. See you next time.